We'll hear about the website OnlyFans. That's a subscription service. Uh, people pay quite a lot of money every month to see celebrities and ordinary people scantily clad. Well, they're getting rid of some of the adult material from their website. But is that a mistake and is it bad news for sex workers? We'll cover that shortly. But it's time now for Uncancelled, in which we tackle subjects much of the media shy away from. Tonight, why is America losing control of cyberspace to China and why does it matter? Well, joining me to discuss this very important issue is Ariana Wold, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK and founder of Off Topic Politics. Ariana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So first of all, can you explain to a Luddite like me what exactly <laughs> cyberspace is? Um, cyberspace is basically just where all our information is held. So this can include critical infrastructure, such as our defense technology. It can include stuff like um, telephones, gas, you name it. Everything is connected to cyberspace these days. OK. And is it the cloud where all of our photos and emails are kept? Yes. All of your data, all of your little secrets, everything that you search is within. Oh, cyberspace. I wish I had secrets. <laughs> Yeah. But plenty well, of people do. And do. Uh, the British government have secrets, too. So some of the some of the information that's in cyberspace is classified and politically sensitive. It is. And that is the information that people are out to get. And they will be able to get if we do not set out some rules for cyberspace. All right. So um, you're concerned, aren't you, that America have lost ground in, in the control for cyberspace to China? Yes, I mean, we very quickly entered a new era of warfare, and it's nothing like we've ever seen before. Um, traditional warfare, you know who you're fighting, but within cyberspace, hackers can be completely anonymous, and they can attack without having to cross a single border. When you throw a nuclear missile or, or a bomb or, or a shot, you hear it, you know it's there. But with cyberspace, it's a silent war that you're fighting. Yes, and we've seen, haven't we, for example, the uh, NHS uh, shut down because of hackers a couple of years ago. Yeah. So you can imagine if, if cyber, if Russia or China had the capability and, and they just, I don't know, maybe Putin woke up one day on the wrong side of the bed and decided to shut off all the power in, in America, for example, just how catastrophic that could be. Well, I think that's every day, sadly, round at Putin's. But um, <laughs> we also have Likely. to be concerned about international finance, don't we? Yes, of course. Our international system is largely uh, connected to cyberspace. So you could wake up one day, look in the bank and have nothing there if we cannot control our cyberspace. So what do we need to do about it? What can a country like the UK do? Um, a country like the UK, I think it's nothing that one country can solve. Uh, cyberspace has infinite actors. It has infinite opponents, attackers and defenders. It is definitely not something that can be left up to just the UK or just America or just China, um, which is why I must emphasize cooperation. Um, so I think the US being the current leader in cyberspace um, should team up with the runner up, which is China. Experts predict that it's just going to take under a decade for China to, to reach parity with the US when it comes to cyber capabilities. So I think they should lead an effort to, to sit everybody down, gather everyone around the table and set out what it is um, that, that we should have in place to ensure that no country is left in utter chaos because of these attacks. I suppose cyberspace by definition is what, two or three decades old. So we're still very much yeah. uh, learning on the job. Yes, it is very, very new, but um, it, it grows exponentially in development. We are seeing it year by year. Uh, uh, so I really must stress the urgency in this. And I think it it's kind of reminds me of, of the 1950s, for example, when we had uh, nuclear weapons just coming to public knowledge. Nobody really took it too seriously back then. or It, it was all a bit uh, mystical and too difficult to understand. Mm. But lo and behold, just... A decade later, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis and we were facing mutually assured destruction. We really want to make sure that doesn't happen this time of cyberspace. We need to get it right. So Russia or China, rather than launch a missile in 10 years time, they could simply empty our bank accounts or, I don't know, de de decode our nuclear weapons. Yeah, exactly. And it would certainly be a lot cheaper for them. And who knows, they could get away without even having to confess that they did it. Is there much evidence that, that there have been crimes committed in cyberspace already? 
Um, well, we certainly have a lot of accusations flailing about. Um, you have just recently, for example, uh, the US accusing China of the Microsoft Exchange hack uh, and just last year, the SolarWinds hack, um, and they were accusing Russia of that. So whilst it's really difficult to prove concretely, um, there are a lot of signs and you can put two and two together as to who is behind it if they don't themselves decide to confess. But can we have any hope that China would collaborate with Western nations to, to actually um, have rules around cyberspace. They've actually suggested it before themselves. Um, China, I think, unlike what the US uh, is trying to suggest, isn't out for global domination. They're not out to be the global hegemon in the same way that could have fooled me for the last thirty years. Yeah, <laughs> I think it, it's hard um, sometimes to to remember. But I think once you look at the CCP and, and the narratives that they've been um, putting out since their conception, um, it, it's very much been about just protecting China's national interest and, and being recognised as a global player, but not necessarily being a global hegemon, uh, which is very different to what the US would have you believe. Uh, clearly, nation states are, are a potential threat. But what about individuals? Can we legislate against somebody in their bedroom causing global destruction? I think we certainly can, and there have been moves to, to do so. But again, this is something that nations need to come together because you might be in your bedroom, but you could be attacking somebody in, in Taiwan or, or in Australia. And I think that is not something that is subject just to domestic law, but international law. So it's something to speak about um, at the table once again. And do you think that large uh, tech firms like Google and Apple can actually help? I mean, is the software there at our disposal to make cyberspace a safer place? I think it certainly is. And um, I'm glad that you mentioned firms like Google because they too have a responsibility. It isn't just governments when it comes to protecting our information systems and our data. Uh, pri the private sector definitely does have a role to play. And I think the technology develops day by day. Every day you have a, a new uh, cyber tool that could end uh, life as we know it, uh, uh, just to be a bit dramatic. Um, but I think they definitely do have the technology to counter that, um, should they be incentivized. Are you sympathetic to the British government's decision to cancel the Huawei uh, contract to roll out 5G technology in the UK? Is that a sensible move to make sure that the Chinese don't have such a footprint when it comes to our technology infrastructure? Um, I think I am sympathetic to that, to that solely because I do believe that that was not something necessarily influenced by the US, um, although many people thought that it was. I think Britain, particularly now, and, and uh, for example, with the foreign policy and PR disaster that we had um, in Afghanistan, need to be establishing themselves as an autonomous state uh, and not being influenced by anyone, not the not Europe, uh, not the US, and all foreign policy decisions, for better or worse, should be representative of what we, the British people and the British government, actually believe. I mean, it's not inconceivable that a bad foreign actor could quite literally switch out the lights in Britain. No, it isn't. And, and that is why I think Britain as well should be um, having a seat at the table and should be encouraging America, actually, to take that first leap forward in, in mending relationships with China. And there are parallels, aren't there, between cyberspace and space itself, where there's a battle yeah. of, of, uh, of technology in the skies. Certainly. I think um, the reason that we're even seeing that is because, you know, military prowess and, and military military strength isn't what it once was. It, it's not the badge of honour uh, that used to command respect on the international stage like it did um, uh, during World War II or even during uh, the Cold War. I think now it is all about trying to command those new, uh, whether it's cyberspace or space itself, new domains. Uh, and that's where people are going to be, uh, states are going to be looking to prove uh, their strength and their capabilities. And actually much of the physical infrastructure of cyberspace exists in space through uh, these enormous satellites. And we discovered six months ago that some of the Russian satellites are armed. They actually contain weapons with which to attack other satellites. Well, that's very characteristic of Russia, isn't it? Of course they would arm it. Um, but yes, I think... Uh, that is more so uh, just another reason why we need to have these rules. Is it right? Is it fair that, that Russia should be able to, to just set up um, 
such an, an aggressive, not just on Earth, but in space, uh, such an aggressive foreign policy like that. We need to, to be able to assert pressure, but we can only do that if we are united on the international front. And that can't just be the West. It can't just be the Five Guys Alliance. It needs to be everybody. And do you think it could be like the nuclear deterrent where um, if we don't collaborate with China and they don't collaborate with us, that nobody wins? Very much so. It, Cyber, a cyber war, an all-out cyber war, uh, is an unwinnable one. There is no winner, there is no loser. Everybody will be affected um, in a good way and in a bad way. So I think we all have a vested interest uh, in making sure that we can establish some kind of universal framework for protecting ourselves. So are you suggesting, therefore, that if China were to attack the West in terms of cyberspace, that, that, that they would be damaged too? Um, I think very much so. Um, I think in an increasingly globalized world, uh, for example, uh, uh, with the tech firms that are moving from country to country, we will feel the economic impact if China's economy goes down uh, as a result of a cyber attack. That's going to be felt all across the world. Supply chains all across the world will be disrupted. It's not something that will be isolated in one area. How did you become so interested in this, uh, this area? Um, I think I'm interested in all things uh, foreign policy and how can you not be interested in something that could mean you wake up tomorrow and life is completely different. Do you think there's a generation of politicians perhaps older than you who don't take this seriously enough because they don't understand what's at play? I mean, I think that could be possible. You know, uh, I think it's not an uncommon trope to have the older generation uh, be sceptical of anything to do with, with technology and, and computers. Um, but I think anybody that, that's paying attention to geopolitical tensions will identify cyberspace uh, as something to focus on. And anyone even who, who was... Um, uh, who felt the legacy of the, the Cuban Missile Crisis and the, the scare around nuclear weapons will be able to see the parallels here. Yes, indeed. And of course, the, the threat of uh, Hitler in the early 1930s, which was ignored by many and, of course, came to tragic fruition. Uh, what's going to happen, Ariana? What's your best guess about the next 10 years in terms of cyberspace? I mean, I think that is entirely dependent on the US. Uh, if they are able to swallow their pride and, and actually uh, recognize China as a fellow global superpower, then we might be able to see the kind of collaboration uh, that would ensure our collective future. Um, but if uh, Biden, the Biden administration and administrations to come continue to refuse to do that and continue to demonize China, I think we might very well find ourselves in the face of another instance of mutually assured destruction. Fascinating conversation, albeit sobering and worrying as well. Ariana, thank you for joining us. Ariana Wold thank is a so political much. commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK and founder of Off Topic Politics. Lots of feedback coming in. GBviews at gbnews.uk.